Good evening everyone. Thank you so much for joining us throughout this week of uh, full of wisdom. Our week of prayer and we have been uh, sharing the wonderful messages through our speaker, Pastor Erwin Mamhat. And now it's our time for our meditation. I'd like to invite you to please open your Bibles and read with me from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1 verses 8. Verse 8. The topic tonight is about the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as you can recall, as you can remember throughout the book of John or even Matthew, it's, it was emphasized that after Jesus was resurrected, He was given promises or He is giving promises to the disciples, to all His followers. And uh, the disciples were asking Jesus, uh, Lord, because uh, they're waiting for the gift of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. And they were asking Jesus here in verse, they were assembled in uh, assembly. They, they asked Jesus in verse 6 of chapter 1. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom? And Jesus answered, to them and he said it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father had put in his own power and you know Jesus told them in verse 8 but you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you will be witnesses unto both Jerusalem in all Judea and all Samaria and unto the outermost part of the earth. Jesus promised to the disciples. Jesus had promised to the people who were there, the followers, the Christians, that He will send the Holy Spirit as a substitute and they will be uh, full of power and they will be sent throughout the world, throughout Jerusalem, throughout Samaria, and throughout the entire world. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has promised us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has given us so much wisdom, power. And this is the time for us to think about the purpose why we're here. As we are going to listen and uh, uh, learn about the gift of the Holy Spirit, we will be uh, receiving wisdom, we will be receiving understanding about the purpose. Why God has given us the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus had instructed us, commissioned us in the book of Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, 19, and 20. In verse uh, uh, verses uh, 18, 19, and 20, it says there that all power is given unto me in both heaven and earth. Therefore, in verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples to all nations, and baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. The Bible is very clear. The Bible is so precious. The words here, that gives us a wonderful promise, hope, 
And God is urging all of us to stay with Him. God is asking all of us to stay connected to Him. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do it. We can finish the mission. We can fulfill the gospel commission that Jesus wants us to do. And we are preparing, and this is what we do as a church. Sometimes church is doing this series of uh, uh, reflection, the series of week of prayer. It is because we are preparing ourselves to be, uh, to, to receive the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is... This is what the church is waiting for. And so friends, friends, pray. Let us pray together that God will continue to use us. God will continue to bless us. And ask the Holy Spirit to empower us, to empower you as you continue on your own missionary journey in this world. And I hope that you will, you will uh, listen and you will also uh, receive and uh, invite the Holy Spirit tonight. So Pastor Erwin Mamhot will give us more details about the gift of the Holy Spirit. He will be feeding us, feeding us tonight with wonderful messages as we continue to live and please stay with us okay stay with us because God is preparing us to be more effective to be more uh, active and uh, be ready because we still have more things to do and accomplish and Jesus is happy to see us. Jesus is so happy to see us working with Him. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do it. God bless everyone. And I hope that you will be blessed with all with our worship tonight. Thank you so much. Sweet.
Shall we close our eyes as we pray? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we would like to bring back all the glory and honor to your name. We thank you for all the protections that you have given to us. We thank you for the blessings, Father. And we thank you for we reached this far in this week of prayer. You've been with us from the very beginning up to this moment and we believe that you will be with us up to the end of this week of prayer. Thank you, Father, for giving us opportunity to know more about the Holy Spirit. So at this very moment, Lord, before we continue our worship, we would like to ask again, Father, that may you pour unto us a double portion of thy Holy Spirit, Lord, because um, this fifth night there will be another message and we don't want to miss it father we want to know more about you we want to know more about the Holy Spirit and we want to know more about Jesus but we cannot be able to reach the holiness of the message without your Holy Spirit so we are asking father that may you give unto us the blessing of the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts, in our minds, so that every word that will come out from the mouth of Pastor Irwin will become a blessing to us and we will be able to remember and apply it in our daily lives. We recognize, Lord, that we are sinner. We recognize that we are weak. But we believe because you have said that even the weakest soul that would ask for the Holy Spirit and will be possessed by your Holy Spirit will become the strongest, strongest that could be able to overcome the temptation of Satan. We want to have the Holy Spirit, Lord, that will help us overcome this world. So we are asking, Father, that may tonight's message will not be in vain. May after this week of prayer, our lives will never be the same again. We thank you, Father, for loving us just as we are. You never give up on us. You never uh, get tired of calling our name to come unto you. Thank you, Lord, for we have this night to be blessed and to be inspired once again, Father, and to be changed. Please give us the Holy Spirit, Lord, to dwell in our hearts and in our minds, and for our hearts to be renewed as well. Please be with the participants, especially with Pastor Irwin. Continuously give him the wisdom from above, so every word that will come out from his mouth will give light into our dark world. Thank you so much, Father, for we know that you have answered our prayer. And we are asking for the forgiveness of our sin. Help us to humble our heart. Help us to empty our mind, Father, so you could be able to fill us with the Holy Spirit. This we pray in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Something in your eyes I see Reminds me of what used to be When I was still uncertain of the truth Sleepless night that turns to days Alone inside an endless space Counted on someone to see me through and if there's one thing I know, you will never live alone. Cause 
you can always call on Jesus' name. And if there's one thing I praise, Jesus helps you find a way to make a change and listen to your heart. God will take away your pain if you choose to let it go. If there's one thing I know, how can I convince your heart? His life can find you in the dark, and only He can make your blind eyes see. For if we speak of lost things found, or lives that I've been turned around, then tell me who knows better child than me. And if there's one thing I know, you will never live alone, cause you can always call on Jesus' name. And if there's one thing I praise, Jesus helps you find a way to make a change and listen to your heart. God will take away your pain if you choose to let it go. If there's one thing I know, I will never stake my life open a lesser thing. Then the cross of Christ will give His life to ease my suffering. And if there's one thing I know, you will never live alone, cause you can always call on Jesus' name. And if there's one thing I pray, Jesus helps you find a way to make a change and listen to your heart. God will take away your pain if you choose to let it go. If there's one thing I Jesus experienced when he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He was tempted by Satan. And yet, he was victorious because the Holy Spirit attended him and inspired him. Therefore, the outcome, the, the result of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is we can able to develop the fruit of the Spirit in our life as Christians. And sometimes all of us are, you know, have struggle how to develop the fruit of the Spirit in our life as Christians. And therefore, Apostle Paul is really reminding us that the deeds of the flesh is ugly and displeasing in the eyes of God. We already discussed, I already discussed the, the, the deeds of the flesh. We already studied that the, the deeds of the flesh are immorality sensuality, pride of heart, jealousy, being, uh, you know, hot-tempered. So those are the flesh, the dead of the flesh that is ugly and displeasing to God. So we, the moment we experience 
receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then this fruit of the Spirit will grow in our life as Christians. Like a seeds, God planted the seeds of the Holy Spirit in our life so that that seeds will grow every day, will grow daily in our life when we are encountering problems. When we are encountering temptations, then we will be grown up. We will be shown to other people that we are really sons and daughters of God. The way we react, the way we respond to all those trials and temptations. When we experience being lowly in heart, being meek in the spirit, it is not because we are righteous. But it is because the Holy Spirit is powerfully working in our hearts for us to be overcomers. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we need really to understand and study one by one what are the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 23 it says, but the fruit of the Spirit Spirit is love. This is the essence of God, the very character of Jesus Christ. Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. This is very clear, my dear brothers and sisters, friends, visitors, who are viewing with us tonight. When we receive Christ as our personal Savior and we accept the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts as sinners, then this fruit of the Spirit will grow up in our, you know, in our hearts as Christians every day. This is not an instant growing. This is not an instant transformation of our hearts that we can able to experience being lovable even those people who hate us even those people who did something you know grievous mistakes to us that we can show love we can show kindness goodness to those people who hated us and being faithful in our relationship with God in this last days. Apostle Paul is really telling us that against such things, without this love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, control against such things, there is no law. Therefore, we need really to obey because the fruit of obedience is love. The fruit of obedience is to, to show reverence. The fruit of obedience is to respect. The fruit of obedience is to love, being kindness, being long-suffering, being faithful against us odds in life. Because faithfulness is the very character of Jesus Christ. Now, this topic tonight this subject that we are going to study tonight is the character of jesus christ because whether we like it or not as sinners as we are it's very hard for us to show the love of jesus christ in our heart as christians every day we stumble every day we feel we, we fall from sin because we are still living in this sinful world and Satan is really cunning to trap us. That we easily stumble. So therefore, hence we are proclaiming, we are claiming that we are sons and daughters of God. We need to invite the Holy Spirit for us to experience the fruit of the Spirit in our life as Christians. What is the fruit of the Spirit? If we already 
read in Galatians that the fruit of the Spirit is love. What is the fruit of the Spirit in our life as Christians? According to Mrs. White, the pen of inspiration, the fruit of the Spirit is the true essence of Christian life. Amen? This is the true essence of Christian life. Meaning, if we are proclaiming, if we are professing that we are Christians, we are true Christians, then we, the, the, the true essence of God's character, the fruit of the Spirit will be our true essence of being Christian. While the Apostle Paul lists nine different aspects of this fruit. It is nevertheless one fruit and has to be seen in its entirety. The fruit of the Spirit does not tell us what a person might be able to do. God is a God of love. He will give us the Spirit even we are still sinners. The thing that we can do is to be ready. The thing that we can do is to be prepared and allow the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts as sinners as we are. The Holy Spirit will not tell us that, oh, you are sinners and I will not inspire you. No. The Holy Spirit will use us. The Holy Spirit will will motivate us, will move us if we are able, if we are ready to be used as an instrument for God's kingdom. For God through spiritual gifts and talents. So I fully believe tonight that all of us has the gift, spiritual gift and talents. But we need to discover we need to develop the talent that God given for uh, given to each one of us for the pardonance of God's ministry and not for our own self, not for our own glorification, not for our own, uh, you know, showing to others, oh, that I am like this. I'm very good in, in you know, memorizing the Bible. No. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to dictate the words that will come out from our mouth. That those words will be as, as sweet aroma to the, to the ears of the people around us. And we can be able to lead many people to the foot of Jesus Christ. So the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is the true essence of Christian life. The question that I, uh, we are going to ask ourselves tonight. Do we have the true essence of Christ in our character? Do we reflect Christ through us? That every day they, the people around us may say that we are through the witnesses of Jesus Christ. We are through uh, ambassadors of Jesus Christ for his kingdom. My dear brothers and sisters tonight, this is a calling from God to each one of us. This is not my word. This is not my, my, my uh, words of wisdom. But this is from God to remind us that in order for us to experience the, the true essence of Christian life is to accept and to have the fruit of the Spirit in our life. We need to value this fruit of the Spirit. And as sinners as we are, it is, you know, it is a struggle. Being kind, it is a struggle. This is our struggle every day. How to be kind to other people. Sometimes when we, we help others you know, we always say, oh, uh, do I need to help these people? Do I need to, to, sh to share my blessings to others? 
This is a struggle for us, my dear brothers and sisters. So therefore, it is not by our own might, it is not by our own strength that we can change our, our character. We can change our behavior. It is only through the fruit of the Spirit. And so that's why last night we discussed that when we receive power from God through the Holy Spirit, that we will become a blessing to other people. So therefore, as Christians, we should value the virtues of Jesus Christ, the character of Jesus Christ. Because in Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23, all the virtues that are listed in Galatians 5, 22 to 23 are present in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a meek person. Jesus Christ is a loving person, a caring person. So that's why as sinners as we are, we must have or we must accept and receive the fruit of the Spirit that this love this fruit of the Spirit will full grown in our hearts that instead of easily reacting, easily backbiting to others, we can show the love of Jesus Christ. Hence, the fruit of the Spirit is the life of Jesus Christ in us. Wow. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, it is impossible for us to practice, to exercise the fruit of the Spirit without the presence of Christ. Without the Holy Spirit because this is the life of Jesus Christ in us. This is very clear tonight, my dear brothers and sisters. If you want to, to be a witness to other people, if you want to carry the light the words of Jesus to other people, we must experience first the life of Jesus Christ in our life as Christians. Made possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. So it, it is very uh, clear message to each one of us tonight that this fruit of the Spirit will made possible in our life tonight, today, tonight that we can able to reflect the character of Jesus Christ, being meek and lowly in heart. These things made possible to whom? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is very important to us tonight to invite the Holy Spirit to, you know, to change our hearts. Even David, King David, when he committed sin, when prophet Nathan confront him that he commit a grievous sin when he take Bathsheba as his wife. When prophet Nathan told him that you committed these sins, he prayed to the Lord. He wear sackcloth and put ashes on, her, on his head and prayed to God. In Psalms 51. And in verse 10 he says, says that create in me a clean heart, O God. It is only God who can create a clean, uh, you know, a clean heart. No one can change our hearts. No one can change our direction in life as Christians in these last days. That's why. We practice every day seeking God's spirit in our life as sinners for us to develop the fruit of the spirit in our life as Christians. You know, as what I have said that this is a struggle. It is our daily struggle. Being lowly, being meek in heart is a struggle. And therefore, we need really to invite the Holy Spirit 
to live in our hearts. For us to be, to be victorious. For us to practice the character of Jesus Christ in us. Because it is Jesus Christ who lives in us. Because our body is the temple of God. Every day we need to open our hearts and allow Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts so that every day the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we act, it must be the fruit of the Spirit in our life as Christians. The fruit of the Spirit is not something we achieve by purely human effort. Yes, that is true. It is not purely by human effort that we can be able to, to develop and receive the fruit of the Spirit in our life as Christians. We are helpless in the sight of God. We are helpless in accepting and receiving this fruit of the Spirit without the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. And that's why we decided to have this topic, the theme, Seeking God's Spirit, because we are sick spiritually. We are sick spiritually. And the only medication, the only, uh, how to say that one, medication for the sickness that we are experiencing every day spiritually is we need to experience the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is um, a medication in our spiritual struggle. This is our quarantine. As we are experiencing this COVID-19 situation until this moment. We need the Holy Spirit to cleanse us, to quarantine us. So that this fruit of the Spirit, if it is possible to produce and display some of the same virtues through the exercise of our willpower. We have, you know, wisdom. We have understanding. But if we have the Holy Spirit in our life, then the Holy Spirit, you know, this wisdom, this knowledge will produce and display same virtues. Imagine, same virtues through the exercise of our willpower. How can we exercise our willpower? Can we Bring the name of God wherever we go. Can we bring Jesus Christ in our life wherever we go? That's the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that we are reminded tonight that, you know, we need really to experience being new in the Lord. Being born again Christian. That the life that we had before, the things of this world will be replaced with the fruit of the Spirit that we can able to exercise every day to other people that our experience being a witness will be powerful instrument for those people who are still in the darkness of sin. But that is not the same as what the Holy Spirit does in us. What we produce ourselves is like a wax fruit compared to the real. Wow. In other words, it is impossible for us to produce real fruit by our own self. It is just a wax fruit that later it will be melted away and it become useless. But if the Holy Spirit will produce the virtue, the same virtue in us as sinners, then that fruit 
of the spirit will produce real fruit that we can able to share to others that this fruit will become a life saving to other people god promise us he called us to become his sons and daughters of god he called us to become fishers of men not only to his disciples but even to us today as a modern israelites that we will become become a blessing to others we will become an instrument a spiritual tools for the salvation of others that when jesus will come we will become worthy we are worthy to receive the crown of life that god prepares to each one of us so the fruit of the spirit in other words is the character of jesus christ wow we need really this character we need really this fruit of the spirit because this is the very character of jesus christ produced by the holy spirit in the followers of christ so it is the work of the holy spirit that this character will produce in our heart as a followers of jesus christ when christ dwells in us we will walk by the spirit according to apostle paul it's not walk in the spirit or to the spirit or with the spirit but by the spirit in other words we are you know the holy spirit is our co-workers our partner in sharing the message in carrying the gospel of salvation and we will not carry out the desire of the flesh and that's why this is a struggle for us in these last days we need really to pray spend time to talk with god spend time to read the word of god and contemplate it every day that instead of practicing the the desire of the flesh which is death we can experience growing in the lord growing in christ by practicing the character of jesus christ you know the word of jesus christ says that every good tree bears good fruit every good tree bears good fruit but the rotten tree bears bad fruit wow so there's a difference between good tree and bad tree the good tree bears good fruit but the bad tree bears rotten fruit a good tree cannot produce bad fruit nor can a rotten tree produce good fruit it is very clear my dear brothers and sisters that there is always a distinction a distinction between good and evil there is always a classification of the fruit that belongs to a good tree and a fruit that belongs to the bad tree the bad tree cannot produce bad a uh, good fruit neither the the good tree can produce bad fruit if you are in christ we must reflect the character of christ if we are in christ we must reflect the fruit of the spirit in our life as christians the good fruit is the natural product of our abiding relationship with jesus through the holy spirit in other words my dear brothers and sisters tonight that the fruit of the spirit is a product of our closer connection with god this is the outcome this is the result when we have a closer walk with god every day it is not by our own good works it is not you know salvation is not because we are doing good work to other people doing good works to other people because we are already a connection with god that is the fruit 
of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So this is not the result of who we are. But this is the result of the working of the Holy Spirit in our life in these last days. When we cooperate with the Spirit's inner prompting on our hearts, the fruit of the Spirit becomes evident in our life. Amen? The fruit of the Spirit is, you know, becomes evident in our lives. No matter how big is the, the waves of our problems, no matter how big is the temptation, persecution in life, this fruit of the Spirit will come, will reveal in our lives because we are in God. We are connected with the source of light. We are connected with the source of life and that is Jesus Christ. God wants us to reflect this character towards others. We need to practice every day, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to invite the Holy Spirit because we are all sinners. We have different struggles in life. We have different problems in life. Temptations in life. But all those things, give it to God. Surrender it to God. And allow the fruit of the Spirit will grow in our hearts that we can able to reflect this fruit of the Spirit because this is the evidence that Christ lives in us. Our characters will be transformed to what? will be transformed to reflect the character of Jesus Christ. If there is a transformation in our life as Christians, amidst of problems, amidst of, you know, accusations around us, if we continually reflect the character of Jesus Christ, if we continually being humble, being meek and lowly in heart. It is not because we are good, but it is because of the working of the Holy Spirit in our life that the character of Jesus will be revealed to other people. What we say and what we do and even we think, Christ's character will be revealed. The Holy Spirit will give us power to live victoriously and to develop the virtues that are characteristic of those who are what? Who are God's children. Wow. It is very clear. This character, this virtue will be developed and, you know, will be revealed when we are God's children. Are we the children of God tonight? Are you the children of God tonight? If we claim that we are God's children, then we need to invite the Holy Spirit that this fruit of the Spirit will grow in our life. That the things of this word, we will give it away. Take it away and put the fruit of the Spirit in our life. That this character will be developed, this virtue will be developed and we will become victoriously reflecting the character of Jesus Christ. This is God's challenge to each one of us tonight. This is God's invitation to each one of us tonight. If we will be, if we want to be his witness, if we want to be his ambassadors, if we want to be a, a torch bearer of God's salvation to other people, we need to surrender our weaknesses to God and allow, open our hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to live in our hearts so that this fruit of the Spirit will grow up 
will grow in our life, in our hearts, that we can able to represent Christ. And the people around us, the people around us can able to witness that we are different from other people. We have God in our life. We need really to, to think about, we, did, we need to think it about tonight. Are we reflecting the character of Jesus Christ? Are we following the commandments of God? Are we honest in our, in our relationship with God? That's why I will always remind this and, you know, repeat these quotations that corruption begins when we are dishonest. Because dishonesty begins corruption. This is, you know, corruption of our minds is not the character of Jesus Christ. God wants us to take it away, this, you know, this deeds of the flesh here on earth. Because we are serving God, we, we witness to others because we want to be in heaven someday. We want to inherit the life eternal that God prepares to, our, to those people who are worthy to receive this gift of eternal life. We need to reflect the character of Jesus tonight. Just pray. Just kneel down and talk to God. Lord, I want to have this fruit of the Spirit. Lord, I want to reflect your character through the Holy Spirit that I can be a witness to other people. Give your struggle to God tonight, my dear brothers and sisters. We will not grow spiritually. We will not mature spiritually if we still keeping sins in our life tonight. Our weaknesses that you know, it's impossible for us to give it away to God. That's why a song says, love is something that you give it away. If you love Jesus Christ, if you feel and proclaim, you know, profess that we are sons and daughters of God, reflect the character of Jesus Christ. Especially to our family. To the husband and wife. As father, reflect your character to your children. That we are an example of Jesus. That God called us for a very solemn responsibility. Divine purpose, divine work. And that is to reflect the character of Jesus Christ. According to Mrs. White. Review and Herald, Volume 3, page 1 to 1, February 13, 1894. It is evident that truth has been planted in the heart by the Holy Spirit. Who plant the truth? It is not us, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit that the, the Holy Spirit plant this truth in our hearts that we can able to practice being loving, being sincere, being patient when it is love. When we love to others and cherish and regarded as a sacred endowment. If we feel that this love that we are developing today is the work of the Spirit, then we need to regard this, regard this as a secret endowment. God is the one who gave this power, the Holy Spirit. Love will then spring up 
in the heart like a wheel of living water. Wow. It is a wheel of a living water. Meaning, you are satisfied. You are not thirsty of this love because this love is comes from God. Springing up into everlasting life. When this love is in the heart, the worker will find no weariness in the work of Christ. In other words, my dear brothers and sisters tonight, that if the love of Jesus Christ will illumine, will lighten our hearts in doing the works of God, then we will not feel worry. We will not feel tired. We will not feel discouraged in doing the work of God because we experience happiness. We experience satisfaction. Because this love is the love of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we need really to receive the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is a connection between the Creator and His creation through the Holy Spirit. John 15, 1 and 2, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, take uh, he take away. Now, in other words, my dear brothers and sisters, if our profession, uh, if we profess that we are Christians, but we don't have connection with the, with that vine, which is Jesus Christ, then the Father, which is the vine dresser, will take this away, and we will wither. We will die. We will weak, weaken. Because we have, we don't have the source. We don't have that connection, which is the source of all the power, the source of all wisdom, and the source of all, uh, we can say, salvations or salvation. And every branch that bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit for us Christians in order for us to grow spiritually Christ or the Father will prune us and this pruning system is when we are experiencing troubles in life when we are experiencing problems in life when we are experiencing temptations in life especially the dead of or the deeds of the flesh. We need to give it to God and allow the Father to prune the thing for us to bear more fruit in the Lord, in the service of God. In that parable, the Father is the vine dresser. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches that are connected to the vine. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, Ask the Holy Spirit tonight, before you sleep, before you go to bed, experience the fruit of the Spirit. Ask God if you have that connection. If we have that connection that we can able to bear more fruit in the Lord. If not, then invite the Holy Spirit. Open your hearts tonight. And allow the Holy Spirit to live in your hearts that you can able, we can able to reflect the character, the true character of Jesus Christ to other people. Then we can see, experience this connection with the vine. The fruit is the result of the Holy Spirit's work in everyone that remains connected to Jesus Christ. The kind of fruit the branches bear depends on the kind of tree. Yes, that's it. If the tree is mango tree, do not expect that the tree will bear guava tree. The tree, the mango tree will bear fruit and that is mango. So it depends on the kind of tree. If we are 
receiving the Holy Spirit as our spiritual guide, then the Holy Spirit will bear fruit, and that is the righteousness of God in us, and not the wickedness, that the sinful thing that God wants us to hate, the desire of the flesh, for us to bear fruit. Therefore, the fruit of the Spirit is the character of Jesus that he, the Holy Spirit reproduces in us. We need to be thankful that we are reminded tonight that as Christians, we need to experience seeking God's Spirit in our life every day. Because this is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reproduce the, this character, which is the character of Jesus Christ. If we let the Holy Spirit lead us, our character, the words, our words and acts will be transformed to Jesus. We need transformation, my dear brothers and sisters. We need revival and reformation in these last days. That our church will be united amidst of diversities in life. Amidst of problems in our church that we will become united because the Holy Spirit unite us to God. And this is our connection. That we are connected with the vine, which is Jesus Christ. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Galatians 5.22 Now, this love, it says in, in 1 Corinthians 13.13, 13, and now abide, faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of this is love. Because God wants us to exercise this love that God given to us. Of course, we are still living in this sinful world. And many of us would say it is impossible for us because we are still living in this world. Yes. But if we invite the Holy Spirit, if we surrender ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to make us access to Christ, and we develop a divine connection with the vine, which is Jesus Christ, then... We will develop the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. Why is love the first and the most important part of the fruit of the Spirit? God's love changes our lives. It is only the love of Jesus Christ that will change our lives as sinners. We are transformed when we understand His love. We are able to love when we receive His love. Loving God prepares us to love others, even our enemies. So my dear brothers and sisters tonight, all our viewers on Facebook, on YouTube, on our Zoom tonight, we need the love of Jesus to, to be in our hearts tonight. That we can able to reflect the love of Jesus. The other virtues of fruit of the Spirit must be coated with the divine love to be authentic. So the fruit of the Spirit needs to be coated. Meaning love is the biggest, the greatest of all virtues. Because love is our relationship. How are, are we genuine in our relationship with God? Every act in our lives should show love to God. Number two, joy. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So we need to be serious in our relationship with God. We need to be... Uh, Persistent in our relationship with God. Because the kingdom of God is not only eating and drinking. But we need to experience God's righteousness. And his peace and joy through the Holy Spirit. So what's the cause of the joy of the Holy Spirit? Or Holy Spirit brings? 
understanding and accepting God's love for us. His sacrifice, His mercy, His forgiveness, His promises, and His blessings that brings long-lasting joy no matter the circumstances. So this is the Holy Spirit brings us God's love, His sacrifices, His mercy, His forgiveness, and His promises, and His blessing. So there is joy, there is blessing, there is promise, there is forgiveness when we have the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy. Okay? Then how does the peace of the Holy Spirit bring work? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And that is found in Galatians 5.22. That peace is the result of being freed from our sins by faith in Jesus Christ. So when we are free from our sin, when we give our desire of our flesh, our weaknesses to God, then people will experience peace. But if we keep sinning, if we keep violating the laws of God, the laws of health, the law of the land, then we will not experience peace because we are afraid of the things that we have done. We need to surrender to God. That peace makes us peaceful and moves us to do our most to be in peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18. So next fruit of the Spirit is patience. Okay, how does patience with the fruit of the Spirit differs from patience without it. Only a few people are patients by nature. Yes, all of us are victims of this. But as we struggle, as we are, you know, we have a struggle of this peace, of this fruit of the Spirit. Some people make an effort to be patient. However, that patience has a limited without the fruit of the Spirit. So in other words, my dear brothers and sisters, we need really the Holy Spirit in our life in order for us to experience being patient in our relationship with God and also in our relationship with one another. Next, patience is not a prevalent characteristic of human beings. It means putting up with others or with circumstances, even with things do not run smoothly, yet even in trials, we are not alone. God sustains us through His Holy Spirit and builds patience, which is the character or characteristic mark of the believers in the end time. This character will be seen in this end time of the earth history. We need to practice. We need to allow and ask the Holy Spirit to work in our life for us to have this fruit of the Spirit. We will go the faster, moving faster, because our time is not allowing us. Another fruit of the Spirit is kindness. Now that you, had, you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness, in 1 Peter 2, 3, the word kindness is used 10 times in the Bible. Eight of them talk about how God treats us. In 2 Samuel 22, 36, Psalms 18, 35, Romans 2, 4, and all these texts are talks about kindness. And the other two times talk about fruit of the Spirit in us. In 2 Corinthians 6, 6 and Galatians 5, 22. The kind way the Spirit leads us to treat others reflect how God has treated us by showing His kindness. God is a kind, you know, is a loving God and a kind God to each one of us. That instead that we will die because of our sin, He took our sin away and He died on the cross because God wants us that when He will come for the second time, we will be with him forevermore. Kindness is the word frequently used in describing God's dealing 
with his people. Kindness also describes our dealing with others in the future. God could be quit, har a quiet harsh dealing with our fault, yet he treats us as a loving father would treat a learning child. So we want to learn from him. This character that God revealed to us, we need to learn from God because he is our father and we are his child and daughters. No matter how firm we must be in reproof, we need not become unkind in, other, in, uh, in our dealings with others. Whatever their faults and issues to prove in kindness is perhaps the greatest sign of nobility of character. Now, kindness is very important as Christians in these last days. Next is goodness. Okay? I will not uh, explain more details. Goodness is love in action. So if we are good, we need to do it in action and not only by words. Faithfulness. As an example, with these three Hebrew men, the friends of Daniel, when King Nebuchadnezzar required them to bow down to idols, they choose to be faithful to God, no matter what will be the consequence. And the consequence, King Nebuchadnezzar thrown them to the lake of fire, to the, to the oven. And yet God saved them because they are faithful to the Lord. Trust in the Lord, according to Psalms 37, verse 3. And do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Okay? That is faithfulness. Then, gentleness. The other fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. Then, self-control. Self-control is not only talking about food, but in general. In our life, in our relationship with God, in our relationship with our fellow believers, fellow being, we need to have self-control. Okay? Now, to end my message tonight, according to Mrs. White, Selected Messages, Book 1, Chapter 51, page 336. According to the pen of inspiration, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The moment we receive Christ as your personal Savior, the moment you surrender your life to God, you became a new creature. You become a new thing, a new creature in the Lord because all things are passed away. Do not go back to your old things. Do not go back to your old you know, practices in life. But go on. Move on. And allow the Holy Spirit to move us, to guide us, to build us the, the fruit of the Spirit. Because nothing but divine power can regenerate the human hearts and imbued souls with the love of Christ, which will ever manifest itself with love for those for whom he died because of the love of Jesus Christ, because he loves us because we are precious in his sight. He died for us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. When a man is converted to God, a new moral test is supplied. A new motive's power is given. And he loves the things that God loves. For his life is bound up by the golden chain of the immutable promises to the life of Jesus. Love, joy, peace, and unexpressible gratitude will pervade the soul and the language of him who is blessed will be thy gentleness hath made me 
great. This is the word of Jesus Christ to each one of us. This is His promise to each one of us that we need to receive Him. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and this fruit of the Spirit will full growth in our hearts that even amidst of trials, even amidst of temptations, even amidst of this chaotic words that we are living today in these last days, this love, joy, peace, and this inexpressible gratitude of God will pervade the souls and the language of him who is blessed will be thy gentleness hath made us great. May the blessings of God, may the power of the Holy Spirit that God promised to each one of us will be with us tonight as we continue to serve Him, as we continue to grow spiritually, that when Jesus will come, we will be meeting in the clouds of heaven and we will be with God forevermore. Once again, good evening to everyone. a sweet, sweet spirit and its bliss, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on its face, and I know that it's the presence of the gracious and kind loving heavenly father we come to you this uh, very moment oh lord we are so happy we are so grateful for all the blessings for all the goodness your protection your love with all the great things oh lord that we receive that we are enjoying the opportunity to witness the opportunity to share the love of Jesus. We would like to thank you, dear God, for this uh, privilege of using us as your uh, people to deliver 
the message about you have inspired us through uh, your servant, Pastor Erwin, for giving us, oh Lord, the wonderful message about the Holy Spirit, about your greatness, oh Lord, and your uh, providence to us. Through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, oh Lord, we can overcome everything, including especially our weaknesses, oh Lord. We thank you so much for encouraging us, for giving us, oh Lord, strength to believe and strong faith, oh Lord, to continue serving. And tonight, especially, Father, we are uh, coming to you in this uh, very moment. We ask that you will continue to bless our program, our uh, week of prayer until uh, Saturday, Sabbath day. We pray, Lord, that you will help us with our program. Please uh, don't allow Satan, oh Lord, to distract, to uh, interrupt our devices, our uh, medium. And may you continue, Lord, to help each one of us, oh Lord, to stay focused on you and always, oh Lord, uh, to give glory in everything we do, Lord. We are praying in a special way for our problems. Uh, each of us, oh Lord, we are facing uh, difficulties, are facing problems. And uh, without the power of your Holy Spirit, oh Lord, we cannot uh, overcome and we cannot uh, uh, fight against our uh, problems and weaknesses, oh Lord. We are praying for your uh, guidance to us. Help us, Father, to focus, to realize that you are God and you are bigger than our problems, oh Lord. We pray in a special way for all the people who are affected with calamities around the world. Uh, especially, O oh Lord, uh, the people in Vietnam right now who are experiencing, O oh Lord, flood. People are hungry. People are uh, not in good situation, dear God. They are suffering. People are dying, Lord, without knowing you. Help them, Father, and comfort them. Bless them, dear Lord. And continue, Lord, to save them. Save them to know the truth and help them, Father, that uh, they, will, they will recognize and realize that there is a God who is bigger than uh, these calamities, who can save. Dear Lord, we are praying as well for all our brothers and sisters, the work of the ministry outside the church, our witnessing, our encounter, Help us, O oh Lord, to reach more souls for Jesus. Help us to be more effective and be more efficient, dear Lord, in, in spreading the gospel and spreading about Jesus' love. Help us, Father, to be more effective. We are praying, Father, for this church to be more equipped and be ready for the coming challenges. Help us to respond quickly, Father to prepare people for your soon return. We are praying, Father, for the Sulas program with all our activities, our mission trip coming this uh, November. We ask, O oh Lord, for your providence to each one. Prepare all our volunteers, all, all our sponsors, all our missionaries to uh, give their time their effort, their their talents, oh Lord, help them, Father, to be to be ready for this challenge and excite uh, exciting uh, work uh, in reaching people. We pray, Father, for all the gospel workers, all our missionaries 
who are working around the world. Help them, Father, to be more zealous, to be more efficient. Please give them the Holy Spirit they need, Father, every day that they will continue, Lord, to serve, continue to work under your care, Father. We pray for each one of us, the Satahi family, the members, with all our friends. We pray for each one to give us and give us, Lord, the, the spirit of unity, the spirit, Father, to work together to finish the work. And I pray for all our brothers and sisters who are uh, sick right now, suffering with uh, COVID-19, still lying in the bed, lying in the hospital, and some kind of pay their bills. Father, may you sustain them. May you bless them. And continue, Lord, to uh, encourage them that uh, everything will just, will just uh, 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 pass. And uh, the final point will be your, your uh, acceptance. I mean, your, your coming to accept us, O oh Lord, in the heavenly kingdom. We pray, Father, for Pastor Erwin to continue, Lord, to give him strength and uh, wisdom and good health to continue serving in this uh, uh, area, this district in uh, Chunburi and Rayong. Help them, Father. Help him, Father, with uh, his his family to continue, Lord, to take care with our members and our our church to encourage our church, oh Lord, and push our church to, to move forward. Help him, Lord, to attain uh, always the courage in, uh, in spite of, uh, of difficult situation they got. Help him to be more, more effective and uh, help him to be happy in serving you. I pray also for... Uh, all our students in uh, different schools who are uh, under our care, we pray for each one, for each of our, our teachers. Please uh, give them power, O oh Lord, and continue to help them in uh, their encounter with Jesus. We pray, Father, for all of us. May you continue, Lord, to uh, give all of us, O oh Lord, the power to overcome and uh, this uh, fruit of the Spirit, the qualities, O oh Lord, as uh, Christians, help us to follow the footstep of Jesus, the character of Jesus every day. You forgive us, O oh Lord, from all our sins uh, that we have committed uh, against you. We pray, O oh Lord, for the strength and humbleness in our hearts. And please accept our prayer and please uh, cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. It's all we pray in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.